our uh, data analysis started showing a lot of uh, abnormal traffic. We didn't know it was log 4 j but we knew something was wrong. So at that point, we were able to put policies in place to protect our device. Now, if you, if you think of it, you have the customer on, on, on one side, there's AT&T's network, and then there's the internet on the other side. So right at the edge where the AT&T network meets the internet is where threat detection and protection is, uh, is put in place. When I'm accessing traffic or when there is malicious traffic coming in from the internet, it hits our network edge first. Who says tech can't be human? What's going on, Hacker Valley fam? Welcome back to the show. I love partnerships and cybersecurity because you never know who you're going to meet just being open to conversation. And let me tell you, we have a great guest today. And I'm also joined by my co-host, Jennifer Langdon. Our guest for this episode is Sentil Ramakrishnan. Sentil is the Assistant Vice President, Cybersecurity Product at at and Business. Sentil, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Glad to have you on. So let's talk about you for a second. I love to kind of learn about how someone got into their current role, your role as Assistant Vice President. I would love to know what does that entail, and what are some of the roles and responsibilities with that title? So I've been with at and a while now, and I've been here almost 12 years now. And I started off in a connected car division, so it was always uh, it was the fun part of AT and T where we uh, you know we went out and we did cool new things. And as part of it, uh, as you can imagine, connected cars have a lot of security challenges that come along with it. So about uh, nine years ago, that was my first foray into security, and I've stuck around with uh, cyber for uh, for the for the rest of my career now. It's it's fascinating because it's constantly changing. Um, and we're up against new things every day, every hour almost. So even within cyber, I've done a few things. But right now, uh, my team uh, and I were responsible for driving our at and business uh, cybersecurity product portfolio, which means we define uh, what uh, products we have to build and offer to our customers. Security is always number one for our customers. It's a huge concern for our customers. And we want to be able to help our customers solve those challenges. You can't think about AT&T without thinking about networks. And now that everything is connected, we have to think about network security. So where does network security fall into what you do at AT&T Business? Yeah, you know, when, when, we, when we talk networks, right, we, AT&T has a, a wide swath of products that we offer from a, from a connectivity point of view. But uh, if you look at customer behavior, it's slowly changing. And, it's, uh, you know, it's at the tipping point where customers are starting uh, to become more uh, cloud first, right? So all their services, applications are starting to move out to the cloud, uh, which in turn completely changes their connectivity setup, right? Uh, it mm-hmm. used to be private point-to-point networks, but now uh, it's all internet-based traffic, right? So the internet is becoming the new corporate network almost. Think of it, uh, you know, whether it's a, a SaaS application like Office 365 sitting out in the cloud or the customer's own application sitting out in one of the hyperscaler clouds. They have to traverse yeah. uh, the internet. So that has really changed the way how um, customers are connecting. And because of that, uh, you know, network security becomes more and more important. Why does it matter if your security starts at the network? You know, what's wrong with protecting each device device instead? There's, you know, tons of hardware products out there that are just out there to protect devices and people's network. And there's tons of products also for protecting, you know, things in the cloud. I think there's this huge dearth of talent out there today from from a cyber specific uh, point of view. So finding the right people to help you secure, whether it's network or on-prem, finding that talent has become a very challenge. And what that uh, uh, correlates to is now for the customer, they don't know what products to pick. How do they evaluate it? How do they pick these products? How do they deploy them? And then, of course, how do they manage them? That has become very, very uh, uh, difficult. The only common element across all of this is your users, your assets, and your applications. The common thing in all of this is your network. This is what's connecting all of your services. Now, if you're able to move some of those security functions into the network, now you have a common security architecture that can work across 
uh, you know, your various deployments, whether it's global, local, you know, a small mom and pop, that network becomes your central point of protection. And if you're sitting up front in, uh, and, and blocking these threats before it gets to your premise, now you're, you know, you're essentially better pr protecting your premise itself. You know, if you think of your business as a house uh, and, and the network as, as what's connecting you to the world, the road going out from your house, you'd rather have that protection at the front gate rather than at your door where somebody can actually come and knock and case the joint, if I can put it that way. When I think of AT&T business, I typically think of like cell phones and whatnot, but then you hear the, the terminology business behind the company name. So I would imagine that you're working with businesses mm -hmm. from an infrastructure perspective. Uh, I guess, how does AT&T business fit in with like the enterprise and, and businesses? In addition to the connectivity products, whether it's a wireline connectivity product, uh, you know, it could be, a, again, a point-to-point -point network or access to the internet, uh, mobility services as well, right? And mobility is not just your cell phones. It's also areas where customers might want a fixed wireless mobile device, right? So any way to access your applications and services, that's AT&T's number one business. But on top of that, there's a lot of other value-added services that these customers want, right? If you think of a, a hospital or, or even a restaurant, they need voice services, things, uh, you know, uh, and we've moved away from the traditional landline phones into more voice over IP type solutions. And then, of course, security, right? So you take base connectivity and then you layer on all these additional services that these customers want. So mm -hmm. we come out and we solve the communication needs for these businesses, when you think of like your infrastructure, I think we take for granted all of the security that might be protecting us before the traffic hits the front door, like you were mentioning. Um, and you, your team was telling us about AT&T Dynamic Defense. So what, is, what exactly is that and how does that fit into network security? All right, so, you know, that, that's, uh, that's the big product that we <laughs> launched uh, earlier this year, Ron. We're pretty excited about it. So what, what we've done with AT&T Dynamic Defense is we've taken... Uh, threat detection and mitigation and put it at the very front edge of AT&T's network. Now, if, mm -hmm. if you think of it, you have the customer on, on, on one side, there's AT&T's network, and then there's the internet on the other side. So right at the edge where the AT&T network meets the internet is where the threat detection and protection is, uh, is put in place. So as a small business owner or uh, you know, a large enterprise, when I'm accessing traffic or when there is malicious traffic coming in from the internet, it hits our network edge first. And so the customer at their end, at their premise, do not see any of these threats actually reach them. Why now for that type of solution and capability? I could I could imagine the, the positive benefit, but I would imagine that there's some type of story or event that happened that made you all say, all right, we have to build this dynamic defense. Right, right. No, this, this started off about three years ago. Uh, you know, at t does a lot of work with the federal agencies, the, the three-letter agencies out there. We offer a lot of our uh, threat intelligence data to them, right? Because we carry about close to, uh, you know, 700 petabytes of internet traffic every single day. So 25%, I think, of the global internet traffic. So we see a lot of things that's happening there. And, and we're able to identify anomalies and threat signatures uh, across this at a, at a global scale. So we were, we were providing some of that um, threat intelligence data uh, to, to, uh, to these agencies. So one of the questions that came from there was like, hey, can you just block it for us instead of us trying to figure out how to use your threat intelligence? And we were like, perfect, let's do it. And uh, at the same time, we were also having conversations with the rest of our customer base. And the question came up, hey, can you help us reduce our threat surface? So we said, hey, we're doing it for some of these larger uh, enterprises and uh, federal agencies. Let's bring it down market, which is where most of the attacks are happening today. We know the attacks are always evolving as well. You know, the um, adversary is always getting better and better. Right. Um, there's AI now. People are talking about that oh, yeah. being, you know, a big factor in attacks and being able to have them escalate and you know, create more, uh, they're more sophisticated in many ways. How does AT&T Dynamic Defense just, you know, take those evolving threats into account? No, I think that that global network visibility is is so important. And I think that's what differentiates uh, AT&T Dynamic Defense from some of the other products that are out in the market, because we're able to see across such a large data set of customers 
we're not only looking for known threat signatures, we're also looking at abnormalities. I'll give you a real world uh, uh, example. I think back in 2019, uh, there was a vulnerability identified in the Java logging uh, uh, service, uh, uh, Log4j, right? The vulnerability went public and it wasn't, it was weeks before uh, patches were available. And then, of course, it took weeks for uh, our business customers to identify the devices that had that vulnerability and go patch them, right? But a week before or so before uh, the actual vulnerability was exposed, our um, uh, data analysis started showing a lot of uh, abnormal traffic, right? At that point, we didn't know it was log4j, but we knew something was wrong. So we had the uh, data analyzed and we said, this is a normal traffic. Something's going on here. Let's take uh, uh, action against it. So immediately, at least for the at t assets at that point, we were able to put policies in place to protect our device. So that that's just an example of how this global network visibility and the power of at t s AI-driven analysis can, uh, can not only catch these known threats, but also even target these unknown vulnerabilities that we can then take action uh, actually needs. Looking at the fact that you're now preventing the attack coming to the business and you know small business enterprise mm-hmm. um, front door, where do they fit in with you know this new solution uh, and offering up AT and T Dynamic Defense? Because I would imagine that uh, many of your customers are attempting to manage their firewall. Mm-hmm. I say attempting because we know that that's a complicated process because now things are more software based, but we still have our hardware based devices as well. Right. So. Where, where do the small businesses, the enterprise fit in with, um, you know, uh, securing their network on top of what you already provide? If you look at the lower end of the market, they usually have something as simple as, a, you know, antivirus on their device. So they have whatever comes with their operating system and they're like, hey, this is good, right? I'm happy. I don't have any more dollars to spend. So this is what I'm doing. And then when you go up the chain, up the segment chain, they have a lot more complicated security. Multi-layered security architecture is what they're doing. And what we're offering with AT&T Dynamic Defense is it's very complementary to what you have. Because it's a software service running in the network, there is no need to add additional hardware. There's no need to install anything on your uh, assets, whether it's a laptop, a phone, or a server, whatever it is. It's, it's all uh, you know, out of the box, just part of your network. So from a deployment perspective, and even from a management perspective, it becomes very complementary. When you turn AT&T Dynamic Defense on, it already has default policy that is recommended by our chief security office, right? So the benefits for the small businesses, obviously they don't have the expertise, they're not going to go in there and fiddle around with the, uh, with the policies. So they can take a zero touch experience and just, uh, you know, essentially depend on our security policies. And then as you go up the ladder and you get more expertise or so you have a larger organization, a, a dedicated cyber team, they can go in and tweak as much as they want. It can function either as a complementary piece or it can also replace some of the components in your legs. I remember the days when I first got into the security realm. Before I was even thinking about doing it professionally, I was on AOL Instant Messenger uh-huh. and I got sent a virus. And I, you know, being young, I opened it. I thought it was a picture. I opened it and then my computer started doing crazy things. So then I, I saw the importance, at least in my life, for installing an antivirus. Mm-hmm. And as the years went on, we didn't need antivirus. Like we needed different solutions and tools. And I don't know really many organizations that have like a, just a true blue antivirus with, without like having maybe other capabilities that EDR provides. Um, so I'm curious, what is the customer's involvement here when it comes to AT&T dynamic defense? Do they have to do any type of policy management? Is there an opportunity to do policy management or is that all managed and facilitated by the AT&T business team? The product has a, uh, a portal that is, uh, that's attached to it, right? When, so when you sign up for the service, it gets enabled uh, and then you get access into the, uh, into the portal. Now, depending on the expertise level of that customer, they can use that portal in different ways. So if you, since the product is, uh, you know, is available all the way down from small business up to enterprise, for the small business customer, they could take a zero touch experience, right? They go in, mm. policy's already set. If they want to make changes, they can. But uh, the portal has been engineered for simplicity, Ron. It's little radio click buttons that you can go just click and change policy if you want. And if you want to write 
complex ACLs and uh, do those things, that part is there too. There's a little advanced button that you can click. The view completely changes. So somebody who, uh, who's in a large enterprise who's, who's uh, traditionally used to do doing more complex work can do it as well. And we've also built in a uh, AI-driven policy manager. So let's say I turn it on for, uh, uh, um, you know, for Hacker Value Studios. Uh, and after a week, you log back in and it auto-generates a list of policies. The policies are turned off by default and you can click to choose it. To, to turn it on, right? So you might be like, hey, I don't know why, you know, Jen's spending so much time on uh, Instagram. I'm going to go in and, you know, walk that around. <laughs> it's as simple as that. One one click of a button other than having to, uh, you know, write, write complex code there. So it, it really scales with the customer, but it is engineered for simplicity. Luckily, we're in the content space. So <laughs> right. Jen has a reason to be on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Hacker Valley Media is a small business. We have around eight, employees, a few contractors. So what would the experience be like for us? You know, like, let's say we were to use AT&T Dynamic Defense. What's the, what's the process and how involved would our team be setting up AT&T Dynamic Defense? It's all self-service, uh, Rod, if you wanted to be, you know, you can either pick up the phone and call an AT&T rep or you, you can log into the AT&T web portal and, and uh, you'll see your connection there, you know, your studio connection, you click it, and it says, do you want to add dynamic defense? Sure. It gives you three packages that you can add. And you just say add. And in less than 30 minutes, the service is up and running. You're really following SIS's advice, which is, you know, secured by design, secured by default. Right. Um, you know, you kind of hear it preached and preached. And sometimes you don't always see it being practiced. And mm -hmm. I kind of get that sense that this is what's being incorporated here in this product, right? Jen, I think Gardner talks about a cybersecurity mesh approach where it doesn't matter if you have 86 different tools, if they're not working together in conjunction, then you know, you're still going to have gaps all over the place. And for our customers, our goal is, again, that, that word simplicity, I, I think I think about that so many times every day because to me, everything we do is to simplify security for our customers. How would someone get uh, information or broad information on AT&T Dynamic Defense? It's right on our main webpage, AT&T Business. Uh, so if you go out there, uh, you know, we'll have the link out to you guys as well, but it's it's available there. Uh, if you, you know, look up AT&T Dynamic Defense with the first link that pops up. Sentil, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy day to jump on the mics with us. For anyone that wants to stay up to date with Sentul, AT&T Business, be sure to check out the show notes or description wherever you're listening or watching. And we would love for you to connect with our great guests and also our great partner and sponsor for this episode, AT&T Business. With that, we will see everyone next time. Thank you, guys.